the tripartite distinction of search, experience, and credent goods, originally made by Philip Nelson in 1970, helps categorize different features of products or services based on when consumers are able to assess their true qualities. Search goods have the kind of attributes that you can fully perceive prior to purchase, that is, before you enter into a contract. If what you see is what you get, then it's probably a search good. Another sign of search goods is that you don't care much about the reputation of the seller because you can judge its quality by inspecting the product uh, yourself. A map of the United States is probably a search good, so is a photocopy of the Declaration of Independence. A painting or a chair might predominantly be search goods. The qualities of experienced goods, in contrast, can only be ascertained after purchase. The classic example, example might be a razor blade, where you only learn for sure whether it's sharp after you buy it and drag it across your skin. Or the quality of laundry bleach can only be judged after you've put at risk your clothing. Consumers can only learn the quality of experienced goods as they use or consume the goods. Finally, with credence goods, the quality of an attribute is difficult to ascertain even after an individual consumer uses it. The claim that a light bulb has an expected life of 10,000 hours or the asserted benefit, benefits of vitamins or uh, frequent oil changes are difficult for an individual consumer to judge even after using them. Uh, how do I know whether my vitamin C tablets are working? Uh, how do I know that this just wasn't an abnormal light bulb and that on average they last 10,000 hours? While economists tend to apply these terms to goods or products, I think it's helpful to think of the concepts as applying to different attributes of something that you might buy. A particular product might have a mixture of attributes that can be evaluated at different times and thus partake of each of these categories. But some products or services predominantly have just one kind of attribute, as is depicted in this slide created by Doug Bowman, which claims that clothing predominantly has search attributes, restaurant food predominantly has experience attributes, and that legal services predominantly have credence attributes. Keeping in mind the differences between search, experience, and credence attributes can help tailor legal rules. With search goods, the law needs to foster credible advertising so that consumers can expect that when they respond to an ad for a product, it will be there. With experience goods, it's important for the law to foster seller reputation, for example, by establishing robust trademark law. I don't want to trust my letterman's jacket to just any laundry bleach. I'm willing to pay more for a razor, man, uh, razor manufacturer that I trust before I press its metal to my flesh. With regard to credence goods, there's a larger role for law to audit uh, the aggregate quality to verify whether the attribute in fact exists. Thus, the FDA monitors the safety and effectiveness of various pharmaceuticals. For discussion, can you think of examples where legislation or regulations have search, experience, or credence attributes? And if so, how uh, should the law respond?